it was every single fear that I possibly could have had leading up to building this career uh, and the things that I wanted most in this world. Every single fear all in one, like all encompassing. As well as like you get around those people, it's a 50-50 shot. At least the way that I saw it, you're either meant for this or you're not. You were either really crazy, what people wanted to tell you, you were crazy, you really were that, or you were meant for this. And my experience is still his. I don't miss it. It's go, go, go. Like a go, go flow. And I'm almost done. And I told you so. When I throw these flows, like it's Roshan Bow. And I ain't too close. It's Joe Smoke Rose. And I'm on my grind. That is all the time. I do not do brace. That's right. I stay in dry. And look, I'm back with a little bit of that. And a little more cash than it came with. Ready that cat is out that bag. But I still ask the boy got skills. I don't need her. I don't need him. I don't need help with me. I got this. I can sing songs. I can spit raps. And I can do both. Even do this. Word. This episode is brought to you by Sweat Tent, the pioneers of the portable wood-burning sauna. Did you know that using the sauna three to four times per week could reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by up to 50% and make you 60% less likely to experience Alzheimer's disease? That's why I've been a big fan of the sauna for years. But having to go to a crowded gym to do it isn't ideal. And all the at-home options are bulky and expensive. That's why I only use the Sweat Tent for my sauna needs. It's the most storable and affordable wood-burning sauna on the market. It not only takes minutes to set up, but it can reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit in 30 minutes or less. So whether you're enjoying it yourself in your backyard, with friends, or in need of a reliable sauna on the go, Sweat Tent is your best choice for the most portable, storable, and enjoyable outdoor sauna experience. All on the Stacks listeners will receive $100 off when you use code OTS. Visit SweatTent.com today to get $100 off your purchase with code OTS at checkout. Again, that's sweattent.com to get $100 off with code OTS. Sweat Tent, helping you fire up your home wellness routine. This episode is brought to you by Wilkes Consulting, a Ramsey preferred coaching firm. Are you drowning in debt? Is the weight of financial stress holding you back from living the life you were meant to live? Then it's time to break free and regain control of your financial future. Wilkes Consulting specializes in financial and debt consulting. Their team of four highly trained Ramsey Solutions Advisors are ready to help you take charge of your money. Whether you're looking to get out of debt, pay off student loans, or simply need assistance on how to prepare to buy a home, Wilkes Consulting can help you fine-tune your budget and provide the resources and guidance you need to meet your goals. Don't let debt or the fear of finances control your life any longer. Head over to WilkoPA.com and book a hassle-free, no-obligation call. Your first step towards financial freedom. Again, that's WilcoPA.com, W-I-L-C-O-P-A.com. Wilkes Consulting, making financial independence a reality. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his Burn Board offers a low impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. What's up, podcast? It's Bill Corcoran Jr. here in the Blue Door Studio, brought to you by Sweat Tent. Abel Hart, welcome to the On The Stacks podcast. I'm seriously super happy to be here. I appreciate you having me. Dude, I'm, I'm really pumped. Uh, I love your energy. I feel like we're like uh, the energy that, that I feel like we both have. We're like on the same page with this stuff, man. So I'm, I'm super, super excited to have you. That, may, that makes me super happy because I, I am an energetic boy for sure. I don't ever want to change, but I, I believe energy is the biggest thing in a lot of all of this in life. You talk about career too as well, but uh, super important. And it's, it's helped me evolve as a human being as well. Hell yeah, absolutely. And you know, I actually this morning, you know, speaking of energy and all all that, like this morning, I I, I started off with your uh, some of your guided meditations. So I'm uh, I'm ready to go, man. Oh wow, nice! You got the the yeah. low the low raspy what's that vocal fry voice? 
Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. So it was great. <laughs> yeah, man. The, the, uh, the, the gratitude one, you know, one of the things was, uh, you know, you know, what, what, what we focus on most grows was one of the, one of the things I, you know, it just stuck out in my head, man. And I just, you know, seeing you and your journey and like what you've done, where you've came from, all the things you've accomplished and all the things that you're working on now and, you know, where you're going, man, it's like, it's, it's just super exciting. I love, I love being in, a, in the same space as people, people like you that, you know, have that same mindset. Uh, well, that means, that means everything to me. And I'm, I'm very much the same way, you know, it's like be, being around. Cause I, I do believe uh, we are who we associate with most, or at least we become you know, right. part of that, or we pick up those things. So, uh, yeah, for me, that's super, super, super important. And, and I am as much the same way. Yeah. So, so the, the, med- the meditation thing, like what, um, for you, like what, what got you into meditation to begin with? That's a great question. Uh, probably it was a long stand of me thinking that I knew how to run the show of my life and especially the things that I wanted to go after and to achieve. It took a long stand of, continuously failing but not failing in the sense where it's like oh i really want to go after this thing so you learn then you fail you learn then you fail it was more so the extent of life before i could really translate that into career and it was just a lot of failures and thinking that i knew the right way and then i would make mistakes more so in life that were detrimental to my well-being and people that i would associate with things that i was involved in Uh, and until i hit i don't know what number rock bottom uh, did I realize maybe I don't have the answers? You know, maybe, maybe, and that was, a, that's a hard one. At least it was for me. That was a hard realization to have. Like, I don't, I don't know my best. I, I don't know how to trust my best thought, you know, because my best thought was thinking that it was getting me one step closer to where I needed to be in life, but also in career and the things that I wanted to go after, uh, especially in music. It's like, if I do this and I do this, I'm just never going to sleep and I'm going to go after these things. And I, I, like, I would never, I'd always forget to eat. And I do think there's, there's a point where you do have to make some sacrifices and uh, you know, do the things you necessarily don't want to do in order to get to where you want to be. I do believe that. I believe there's a period of that. But the way that I was doing it was completely unsustainable and it tore my life apart. And then I would complement that with doing not the best external things in life and evol- involving my, myself around those people, places and things. So to answer a long winded way to answer your question, I reached that rock bottom in my life where I was like, maybe someone else has better advice than I do. I just really couldn't trust myself in anything. And it was a scary place to be. But fortunately, there was someone in my life where I was like, just allowed them to guide me in that way where I could relate to them. I was like, Oh, I could pick up on the things you're saying. You definitely lived a different journey than me, but I totally see how I did very similar things. What, what helped you get to this place? And I guess you could say a mentor in a sense, but but their meditation was one of those big ones where it's like, you know, having a meditation practice will change your life. And, oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and, yeah. you know, and, and when you said rock bottom, like what was, what was rock bottom for you? What'd that look like? Uh, uh, again, yeah, just involved in wrong people, places and things just associating not not the, you know, dr- drugs, alcohol, but just, uh, just a lot of getting in trouble and being in and out of, uh, jail. And I, I don't know. I, I honestly, it was, I, so I used to snowboard. Snowboarding was going to be, I was, the Olympics was my goal and that's what it was going to be the rest of my life. I was injured. I had plenty of injuries leading up to that, but my back was my biggest injury and which really put me out of the game essentially. And I was like, well, I don't, if I can't do this, I don't want to do anything. I mean, I was, I was very young, but it was very, oh, it, kind of, it kind of really destroyed you. Yeah. It was a pessimistic thing. And mind you, I didn't know anything else. You know, it's just from a young age, I started snowboarding. It clicked like that thing. And we could get into the word talent. Cause I have, at least for me, I have a very weird thing with that word, but that um that clicked that i felt talented at yes i had to work hard and learn all the things to get that good in that sport but then i lost that and i felt that was my purpose that's why i was put here on planet earth i could have lived in a hut all the way on the top of a mountain for the rest of my life and been able to do what i loved every single day you know that was i was like oh my gosh and then that was all taken away from me being so young feeling like it wasn't my choice it wasn't my decision to have this external thing that i felt was my purpose be taken away from me if i can't do that I don't want to do anything else, you know? 
Like, yeah. like, and so I say, I got the case of the F's. I was like, well, F this, F that. I don't, I'm not going to be here. It was very, a bit morbid thinking as well. Again, I was very young and I was like, then, then whatever. I'm not going to be here that long. I don't want to live this life without that purpose. And my mom, fortunately, she'd be like, you could do anything you want. I was like, but I don't want to do anything else. You know, yeah. that's what I want to do. So, uh, so again, wrong people, places and things getting caught up. Uh, using a lot of external devices and uh, the whole bit. That's definitely, I'm, I'm not the only person that has that story. Right. And uh, yeah, it was just, that's, that's, that's what it was, you know, for, for a while until music. Yeah. Yeah. So music, what well, that music for you, was that really kind of your way of sort of finding your new purpose in life? Right. Yeah. And funny enough, my dad's a musician and he's also a hundred percenter. So he makes masters, produces, sounds, designs, sings, writes, plays guitar. Uh, you would think that that probably would have been my first decision over. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, over music. But, but I always say sometimes when things are so close and in front of your face, you neglect to see them. And yeah. I feel like that's how it happened. Also, a big truth in that is I was just too insecure. As a kid, I would see him or if he's working in the studio or doing something. He would try and get me sometimes to like record something. And there would be a couple times I did, and I'm just like, oh, it's so bad. Like, I don't want to want to hear it. I wouldn't even want to do anything into the microphone. And I was just very insecure uh, as a human being, really, just being young and growing up. I, what are people going to think of me? How is this? And then in turn, how do I feel because of all that? Uh, and, and, I felt, and I felt like I had to put on a certain act for a long time to, to fit in in certain mm. situations because so I am like, like you this. Couldn't all the yeah, time. You couldn't be yourself. Right? You, felt, be you felt like you couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't be myself. So so that's where I think, I, I don't think I knew it at the time, but that's where I was very protective of my energy. And I just want to be myself and not feel like I have to be someone else to, to fit into to any box or to friend group or whatever it may be. And until yeah, I found music. Yeah, yeah, until I found music, you know, so and that, that was more serendipitous. It was more sort of a fortunate accident. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, like personally, like me, like, you know, I, I've shared this a few times, like on my, on, you know, on my podcast before, but like, you know, talking about like, sort of like finding yourself and being yourself and like, and, and whether you're, you know, fitting in versus like that whole not fitting in thing, like me as a kid too, like I was that type of kid where this is like the way I explain to everybody is like, I was friends with everybody, but friends with nobody. Mm. And, and like, I didn't really like fit in really like anywhere per se. And like, I, and I couldn't ever figure it out. Like, like, well, like, why don't I fit in here? Like, why don't I fit in there? Like, and I was just kind of like a little bit friends with everybody. Yeah. And then yeah. it wasn't until, you know, like I'm 35 years old. Like it wasn't until maybe in the, like the last few years, like doing all this podcast stuff and everything and content creation and really finding out that, you know, like I felt like for like most of my whole life, I was like always searching for like that purpose. Like, oh, like, well, where, do, where am I going to fit in? Where am I going to fit in? And I, mm. I always struggle with like, man, like I just don't fit in anywhere. And then like, I finally came to the realization, like light bulb went off, like, duh, um, this whole time, like I was never meant to fit in there. I was never meant to fit in anywhere yeah. because yeah. I was just meant to be me and, and who I am. And, and that's it, period. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. think and I think a lot of pe a lot of people like struggle with that and don't realize like, oh, you know, it's actually right in front of you the whole time. And it's you and it's just just be you and, and nobody else and and just embrace it and go after it and do what you want to do, because, you know, that's that's what really matters. Like, you don't you know, you don't have to. You don't have to fit the mold. And I think when everybody tries to fit the mold too much, you become somebody that you actually aren't. Yeah. It's actually yeah. the complete opposite direction. For sure. Right? For sure. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's, and I, I mean, everything you were just saying, uh, for one, that's awesome that you share those things, right? Because that's why if we have a platform to talk about these things, I think it's super important to. Where oh, I, yeah. Just like me, uh, obviously, <laughs> music is my main thing, but I can't help myself, right? Because I wouldn't even yeah. be able to be doing what I'm doing and so fortunate to be able to do it if it wasn't for these things that allowed me to do it. And the things that allowed me to do it were all of the life experiences and the things that I now wish I would have known back then, but I do know now and wish I have a platform to speak. So if someone else yeah. could potentially be helped from this information or find out anything that could potentially help them, I also just can't help myself, you know, because you're on yeah. that wave and you have this understanding like, oh my gosh, I just want to put other people on that. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just want to get people on that other, on that same wavelength, you know? Yeah, for sure. And there's a balance behind that, man. I mean, it's it's like you. I really truly want everyone, but it just won't. You know, the truth is, like, it won't resonate with everyone. And we just, as individuals, I guess, or as content creators or whatever we're doing and putting out on social media, we have to have that understanding and realize because there's be so many times 
where I want to respond to a comment, be like, no, please. Like, okay, that's how I used to think, you know, and, and I'll realize I'm out of 160 characters and I'm like, it just, <laughs> how, how often, how, how much can I do this? And I think it's just yeah. uh, important that people will hear the message when, when they're definitely meant to. Yeah, for sure. By the way, like it, uh, it, it. I didn't realize until like you, you were turning your head a little bit, and I, then I saw is that that seventy sixers hat. Oh uh, yeah, seventy. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. originally grew up uh, right outside of Philadelphia, so Phillies. Yeah, yeah pop. but but I know nothing about sports. If you're gonna ask me, okay, sports, yeah, I have no idea. Extreme sports for sure, but yep, uh, yeah, nothing about it. I don't, I don't know. That's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm not like a huge, huge sports guy either. I mean, like I'm, I, I went to Penn State, so I'm, a, I'm a you know Penn State football fan. But besides that. Um, but you know, I mean, but you know, I'm just asking, but I was, I was curious just about the hat. Cause I'm like, you know, I like, I like the colors and I see it. And then, and then when you turn, I'm like, oh shit, 76ers. I knew I did. I knew you were, you were originally from Philly. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, oh, I gotta, you know, I gotta ask him about that. Uh, but where, where, where are you at nowadays? Uh, right now in, in Miami. Fun, funny, funny enough. Yeah. I, I like it. A little warmer. A little yeah. Warmer. Like, yeah. A bit. Yeah. I realized that that change needed to happen in my life is I think. My sister, my sister and I are 10 years apart and she realized it first. She moved out to California actually. Uh, I don't know how old I was, but I was, I was still snowboarding and then back and forth, uh, living at home with my parents when I was younger at the time. So uh, she moved to California and she was always saying, Oh, I get like the seasonal thing. And I think my, my drive and a lot of my passion and towards something with music came from training and snowboarding and do this and you got to eat these things and this is the way you do it and nonstop it's going to hurt but you got to do the things you don't want to do in order to get the way you want to be my my the training mentality really translated into music and business and just all of it right so i mean as, as well as life because i felt like well, i could be anywhere i could be in the i could be in freaking alaska and it's going to happen i'm going to do it but little by little i started to realize oh my gosh like the weather has such at least for me such a huge impact on my energy like we talked about in the beginning right and yeah. once i started to re- i think it was just because i i do believe us as human beings create great excuses to hold us back from the things we want most in this world because they're great and most of the time they're valid right but that was almost one that was holding me moving forward i was like no i could do it in the cold yeah maybe i'm a little bit depressed and i don't like going outside but you know i'm gonna do it and if i could do it here i could do it anywhere else and that held me back until I experienced California. I hit that rock bottom. And it was the one time out of my, all my rock bottoms that I just didn't want to go home. I didn't want to go back to the people, places and things. I started talking to that person that had helped me. I was like, I actually truly internally, I just, I want to start fresh. I don't know what it is. It was, it was that, that, that open moment where I don't even know. I just know that I don't want to feel the way I feel every single day. So I'm willing to do anything to take me from that. And I don't know what it is. But I'm ready to, you know, be open to it. And I experienced California and the weather. That was it, huh? Oh my, is this heaven? I, I'm a big super. I love cars, and I was like, no one has license plates on all these supercars. And I'm like, oh my gosh, am I in heaven? It's beautiful every day. It doesn't even rain, and the weather's like this every single day. And there's no <laughs> houses to got, yeah. you know. And it was just so mind blowing to me. Mind you, I had been very fortunate to be able to travel so many different places, but I was snowboarding, so it's very snow it's not always nice you know you get powder days very cloudy um and it was just a new experience i was like oh this is what is this is what life like could be like <laughs> you know yeah yeah so miami Jeez. was the the second best to to that i'm gonna be going definitely going back out there i love it i love it i love it i love it uh the humidity out here is a bit much though yeah i was gonna say how how long, how long have you been in miami uh, just about six months now, six months, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and my only decision for coming out to Miami, I was ready to go back out to California. And the only reason I went back to Pennsylvania, so I lived in California for I don't know how many years, four years, then I went back during COVID. And then I lived there for another almost a year and a half. And then the only reason I went back is because Char- Chaz, my manager, uh, we shoot everything together. And any of the stuff that you see moving, he he's shooting he's, he's the guy older. you know we go out and yeah. we really have a full rig and we go he's out and dope shoot. too by the way yeah and i was living in california at the time and he has a house in pa pennsylvania so i was like i need to stack up on content and the whisper was the first thing that started to pop off and we needed content and he had come came out to california to visit and film some stuff but it wasn't enough to be able to sustain it 
And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was in the best place of my life in California. And I, again, if I historically would look back, back on any of the things that allowed me to move forward, I was like, I really don't want to go back. Definitely not to the weather. It was mid, I remember there was a snowstorm and I, dr I drove back and forth cross country in my car. So I remember oh, shit. the snowstorm. There was all these things like stacked up, like actually, like legitimately uh, in life <laughs> where I was like, oh my gosh, all these things. But I know, I just know I feel it. Of course, I don't want to freaking go back to the cold. It's beautiful out here. But I need to do that. If this is the next step in the evolution, I need to go back and we need the film. And I went back and the first thing, and that's, I was like the new, like the hip hop stuff from too good to where the first thing was the thing that went do first thing we filmed first time it was freezing out some of that footage for for the song too good was, I was we were so cold I, I was like oh my gosh why did i make this decision you know was yeah bad, bad call yeah <laughs> it was the first thing to pop and it's the biggest thing to date the biggest thing to date surpassed anything that was going viral before that and it just like reassured it started i think all of those little things along the history of the evolution of self-improvement i guess and self-awareness starts to show yourself that, oh my gosh, I'm starting to trust myself to be able to make the right decision. And that's mm. huge. It was huge for me because I didn't know if I could trust myself in anything, you know? Yeah. At what, at what, at what point did you finally like get, get reach the level where you're like, okay, like I, I'm, I believe in this. I, I, I can fully trust in myself. Like what, what point, you know, were that's you? A like, question. Where, where, that's, that's a great yeah. question because I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's ever something that's complete because as human beings, we have these thoughts and these feelings. Uh, reading this this great book just read, it's called The Untethered Soul. And it's pretty much explaining that we are not our thoughts, right? And to think about that, some people, you ask some people this question, like, what do you mean we're not our thoughts? Like, we're the ones thinking, but we're not. We're the observer of the thoughts, the things, right? You ever, mm. if, you, if you actually... Think about the thoughts that go out through. Maybe maybe someone cuts you off. Let's just make it a super simple thing to relate to. Someone cuts you off. What are the things that are going through your head? What the, like why would this person yeah, even do that? Person. Maybe that person's then you're the nice part of you is like maybe that person's in a rush because they're late to work and they can't miss another day at work because they're fired. And then someone's like, oh, of course, but that he should just freaking run off the road. He should just <laughs> yeah. do this stuff. Don't even listen to that. Honk back at him. No, don't honk back at him. You know, don't whatever the back and forth is, the craziness. Those are just the thoughts. They're external from who you are as the observer until you feed into, okay, I'm going to honk back, you know, or I'm going to do this. I'm going to feed back into that energy. And mm. the, the sooner we could start to have an understanding and awareness, realize when those thoughts pop up to step back and just be an observer of them. Right. And I think that's a, that's a tricky thing because so much stuff is subconscious past people, yeah. places and things, the programming that we've been programmed around the things we listen to the people, you know, the advice that we had asked for and then got answers to and necessarily probably wasn't the correct ones. The things that we're just programmed naturally to in this life at this part of whatever journey of awareness we're at. We're, we don't want to do those things instinctually. We're like, Oh, we're trying to live this other life in order to live the other life. This life we dream of, we have to change and become someone completely different which is yeah. a huge realization. Scary. It is. It is. And you know, that, you know, the, the, the driving the car, cutting the getting cut off uh, example. I mean, that's, that's like the perfect example, you know, because it happens to everybody, all of us, like all the time, right? Like anybody can, can relate to that. We've all been there. Um, and we all will continue to be there too. Like that's going to continue to happen in life. And, you know, like you said, like it's the, um, it, it, instinctually, you just want to be like, ah, oh, fuck that guy. Like, you know, like you just immediately like, you know, and yeah, you know, I'll I'll admit too, like I I've I've been that guy, you know, and like we all we, we we all do, like we all just fall right back into that, like you know, you just immediately snap, you know, decision, like you don't even yeah. think about it, and like you said, if you just kind of take a step back or remove yourself and just observe, for sure, like what's happening, man, that's that's a, I, I like that. What's the name of that book again? It's called The Untethered Soul. Okay, and and a big part of that too, right, is is what it explains in the book which really helped me grasp the concept. Cause I knew this before. I was like, Oh, we're not we're our own thoughts. Be very conscious and not feed into them. You know? Cause if you want to make a decision, like, I don't want to go to the gym, you know? Oh yeah. Like, I did go to the gym yesterday and I do kind of hurt. I know I committed to myself, but no, I also don't want to hurt myself because then if I hurt myself, I won't be able to sustain it or no, all these things that will go in your head that just are excuses to keep you from the thing that you committed to yourself. Right. right? right. And 
the sooner we realize and what they explain in this book too, as well, which really helped me grasp it is imagine if that was a person, would you want to hang out? That person has no idea what's going on. You know, you should probably go. No, I don't know if you should go, you know? <laughs> yeah. Don't hang out with that person. And it's super important to have this awareness to, to move through life and anything because, because we are the cause and the effect of all our life decisions and choices, these choices that we make, you know, it's each, each individual choice. And this could go into my, my, my game theory. I feel like everything is very game. Like, yeah. What's the game theory? You know? Ooh, uh, I don't even know if deep. it's so much a theory, I guess okay. it is because it's all opinion, but um, it's just, all of this is so, Game like I think life is very game like. We're we're dealt a hand of cards. Everyone, each individual, a different game. Maybe if you could relate it to Monopoly, I don't know what I'm gonna roll on the die. You know, you show up on the board as blue, green, yellow, whatever the case may be, and you're dealt with this, and you start with this. You roll the hand. You have no idea what you're gonna get, but how do you work with the hand that you're dealt? You could roll and reach that piece of real estate, and you look at the rest of the board. Does it make sense that I yeah. should invest in this and yeah. do this thing? I don't know. Or should I just hold my card? Let's maybe now's not the right time. But let, let, let's keep going. Or maybe you make that decision. You're like, it just feels good. And I'm at that place in my life on the Monopoly board that I should make that real estate decision because the next person behind me might come grab that up or want to buy it off of me, whatever the case may be, right? Or you roll that dice and you end up in jail. And it's like, okay, what's the repercussions? Obviously in life, it's deeper than just a, a board game. But sure. it's like, okay, what were the re repercussions of this? Should I probably held before I rolled? And it's trying to figure out these these things like, oh, it's very game-like. And then you really start to understand the, the the laws of the universe. The laws of the universe are just the same as the laws of gravity. And it's such a weird concept, I think, especially for people that first hear that. It's like the, the laws of the universe, right? These spiritual, these spiritual laws um, are so important. And when you talk about, I mean, obviously, if you watch any of the stuff, I'm very big on manifestation, law of attraction, living in the frequency of all these things. If I'm sitting there and I'm watching the news, constantly oh my gosh the amount of times i told my parents to stop thankfully my mom did my dad still watch it but stop watching the news yes you please, know they know what they're, yeah. they know they know what they're doing you know yeah they know it's a trap it's, it's a trap dude it, it's all negative right but if you're focused on that this is what happened in your area you know and then we turn it's like this person died and this person did this and all these negative things and that's unfortunate those things stink that it happens and then it turns to a kitty it's like but this kitty was saved out of a tree you know what does what relevance does that have? Then that so distorts your pers perspective on all of it, and what you what you really start doing is, and it's again past DNA that regardless of how you believe we grew up in this world, right? We were grew up and we weren't as smart as we were now. But the one thing that we knew we needed to do in order to survive was to know everything that could possibly kill us. We need to know all the negative things. This could hurt us. This could kill us. We have to be safe. Huts are good. This is bad. You know, it's like pretty, pretty black and white for the most part, but you know, we're at a place in, I guess, the history of human beings where it's not like that anymore, but it's still dug that deep into our DNA. You know, you put a house cat and it, Joe Rogan says this funny thing about us, was, I think it's his stand up. He talks, I don't know if you ever watched it, but, it, but he talks about his house cat. He's like, the house is, the cat's never been out of the house. Right. But then he'll, he'll be sitting there looking out the window and he sees a squirrel. And he's the, the cat starts growling, like creating this weird, crazy sound. Never seen anything, but it's something instinctual. And it's like, mm, I remember, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, never, the cat's never been out of the house. So I think just as much as animals, a lot, um, not to call us animals, but we are in our own sense, right? Instinctual beings. We have, there's a lot of that past DNA that's still ingrained in us because for as long as the, the world's been around, you know, like we haven't been there for that long, we've been here for that long. So, um, I don't know where I was going with that. Again, I prefaced this by saying my brain will go a million miles an hour and all over the place, but having that awareness, uh, for all of it starts to be able to make, Oh, make those life decisions and those choices in the game. Yeah. Cause it's like, okay, this didn't make the most sense. And sometimes stuff just happens. And I believe that's the universe. And when the universe presents itself, right. Say you roll it again, you're like, okay, maybe I don't make the double call. So I don't end up in jail in that case scenario again. I roll, I, I just hold it and I pass it to the next person because that's how I got in jail last time. But then you do it and then it happens again. And you're like, what's the meaning for this? Well, you have no idea the meaning. The meaning could have been because then the next person is going to roll over you again. So then you get the next piece of real estate that they couldn't or whatever the case may be, but it's all perspective. Yeah. And what's the point if we're here for only so long, what's the point of us being like, 
like why 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 didn't this those thoughts why didn't this happen this should have happened and it couldn't have happened but if it didn't happen what if this would have, but what if it would have happened and our brain just goes all over the place and it takes us out of enjoying what is most important and what we're doing right here right now the present moment yeah i was just yeah. gonna say I, I i was thinking that right when you said that i was like <laughs> man that, that's exactly yeah. what it does man it takes us right out of the right right out of the present like because it's so, yeah. you know, like, and I, I think I've heard you say it on, it was either your podcast or, I don't know, some, some content of yours I was consuming, but like, it's just, you know, that, you know, you know, it was actually the meditation stuff. And it's like, you know, you do that, like your, your morning routine, like I, I was listening about your morning routine. It's like, it's non-negotiable, like your morning routine, yeah. like that's what you do. Like, and that's what, that's what keeps you on track. And it's like, you just, like you said, like in the game every day, it's like, you have to do that to, to be able to stay focused and, and, and present. Right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Non-negotiables are huge. I mean, that's, uh, I think starting out with anybody hearing this that maybe doesn't know what a non-negotiable is or, or does and is, but can't hold true to themselves and keep that non-negotiable and non-negotiable. Um, and a non-negotiable for the people that don't know, it's just, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, just setting something up in your life that you know is positively moving you forward in life. And that also has a positive effect on you. Yes. In the present moment, even though you maybe don't want to do it. Um, but you as a human being, uh, and you know, you feel good doing it. Just like, for example, going to the gym, it freaking hurts and you don't want to go, you don't want to drive all the way down there and you got to come back. You much rather watch TV or eat something. I get it, you know, but you go. And when, after you go so good, you know, because it's not just about, Oh, I want the six pack. It's about like what it does to your brains, your endorphins, this thing, like the release that it gives and yeah. how great you feel after it. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I went. And those little wins add up and then you start to realize then those non-negotiables don't become so hard and complex but there has to be a level of uh definitely drive and determination and like willingness to commit to your non-negotiable and for people that do know what non-negotiable is you already know i didn't have to explain that but <laughs> but regardless uh, i do believe especially starting new ones uh and reward systems which is say it was the gym example again i, I like to relate things to the gym just because it's the easiest most easily digestible for most everyone knows i used to have this protein shake that i loved you know i you could look at some of my stuff and be like i love to go to the gym this is not the case you know it's really not like how much rather sit home is the next person yeah. but yeah but to get myself in that non-negotiable this is what this is what we do now very david goggins this is what we do now it's irrelevant i'm talking to myself i had this protein drink that i love freaking love peanut butter love it and it was a healthy shake, so it was a positive thing, but I wouldn't, I couldn't drink it until I went. You know, I had to go to the gym and then I could enjoy it after. So there's a little reward system start to go, oh. And so then in my brain, so you little train by little, I really, what's that? You have to train your mind, like literally, like, like Goggin says, right? Like, for sure. Yeah, you watch them. Yeah, yeah I, I'll do it. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and I'm very, like, that's, that's a weird thing. I'm not obvious. I didn't grow up with, uh, anyone in the military or anything, but I'm definitely and have been historically, especially when it comes to work, very military mentality towards myself. Uh, and a lot of times that's been to my demise. It's not been the best because really all this is too. And like you sum up, I feel like anything we're going to talk about here and have talked about uh, all of it is balance. I don't care what anybody's, all of it is just balance. You know, because at the same time, if I were to go to the gym and be in that me mentality, it's like, oh, I'm going to go again. I want another protein shake. I'm going to go twice a day, every single day for seven days a week, nonstop. That's what I'm going to do because I freaking love those protein shakes or just because now I see how much it affects me and how good I feel. Where's the line, you know, buddy, yeah. or will you tell yourself, you know, where's the line? And it's just the balance. It's like, okay, maybe I am, I need to take an off day, which was a hard one for me for a long time after I got into the flow of it. Oh, I'm really slack. I can't take an off day. You know, yeah, I almost yeah. felt guilty on the off days, but then yeah. I really realized I started to do that because I didn't do that for a while, how good I felt and how much my workout was actually, how much more it benefited me when I took that off day. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's actually messed up. Yeah. You, <laughs> you wouldn't know? think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mo most people don't look at it that way. You know, yeah, like they look at it sure. like the opposite. Like you can't, but then when you take the time off, it's like, it's like a, it's like a reset, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah. I think that's a perfect way to put it too as well. It's. It's a, it's a reset and, and just like anything, you know, it gives you, um, it allows you to be appreciative to how much it does affect you when you're taken away from it for a little bit. You're like, Oh God, you know, I do like it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, doing those things and implementing non-negotiables, having that, my stretching in the morning, meditation, 
you know, the gym, a big ones getting out in nature, which I miss as much being out here. It was super nice this morning. Went, went, like, went for a walk down uh, to Starbucks. Super nice. But it feels like a California day today. And that's the one thing I do miss in California. I miss having those hikes. That's what I would do. Every Nature. <sighs> yeah. Just, oh, nature. So so I think us as individuals and finding those non-negotiables, it's setting up things that, yes, we, we like, but know that fill us energetically or just spiritually as human beings. It's like you could like playing with dogs. You could like going to the park. Um, you know, meditation is one where it's kind of like a, a balance. Now I enjoy it, but at first I was like, I don't really want to sit there and freaking have to, you know, whatever. But then you do it and you realize how much it benefits your life and it, and it clearly allows you to present yourself, uh, as this more together human being, which is a weird thing, you know, especially you hear how fast I talk and these things that I want to talk about and my brain could go a million miles an hour when I'm not doing that. I'm, it's no, it's no good. It's, no, it's not good, you know? Yeah. It's not, 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 yeah. not, a, not a good side of Abel. That's the bad, like you, you go, yeah, we don't want that. Yeah. 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 It wasn't good. I'll yeah. 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 No. So that's, yeah. I mean like it's same man, like the, the, you know, just getting outside, like even just the sunlight, man, like, you know, like just, you know, especially like in winter, I know, cause you know, you're from Philly. So you I mean, you can relate, man. Like, like just, just like, when the weather starts to break, like right now, like I'm, you know, I, I'm, uh, we're a couple hours north of, of Philly is where, is where I'm at. And, okay. uh, you know, so like, you know, it's, you know, today it's actually like a little chillier out. Like the last few days we've it was like kind of like a tease from the, uh, you know, from the weather gods, but, uh, it was like a little right. warmer than, then we just got hit with like this, like cold today. It's windy, you know, the sun wasn't right. out and it's like, it's like, it's like, it reverts you right back. And it's almost like that depressing, like cold. So you feel that. Oh, you feel that hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Yeah. And like, and I know, and like, and I know tomorrow is actually going to be like, like 65 and like, I know it's going it, to be, and it's going to be like totally different, you know? And like <laughs> that stuff like really affects you. Like a lot of people, like, I feel like don't realize how much like that stuff actually does affect you positively or negatively. It really, yeah. it really does, man. Like, you know, yeah, you, know, you know, maybe there's people out there. I'm so curious, you know, maybe there's people out there that are total opposite. And I think that's I don't think there's a right and wrong way, but I'm sure. I'm so curious because of how much weather impacts me. I'm very curious if there's someone that's just like, no, nah, I could do it like wherever. Like, I'm just this person everywhere, you know, not that yeah. there's, there's, I don't know <laughs> right. why I gave a southern accent, but, you know, yeah. I think that'd be awesome. That freaking sounds super wicked sweet. But but just like you said, you have that awareness. So I knew for me. I needed to be somewhere where it was, you know, majority. Now, Miami really only happened because I went back. I made that jump, the decision. I drove back cross country so that we could film the first thing that we filmed pop, which was such a sign from the universe. Like this was like, oh, you know, I started to trust myself. Not that I didn't trust myself at that point, but it's just another one of those. It's another uh, affirmation, reaffirmation. Yes. Another 100%. affirmation. Yeah. And it, and I was like, okay, so then. It, we filmed enough there and we had a point where I was like, okay, I, I would started feeling just what you were saying. I was in that same room in the same studio. I had a cool spot to work out of. And I just started to feel it. It was just like life was creeping up on me, but I was doing the same things I was doing in the happy place. And I was like, Oh, I don't know. Why am I feeling like this? But I knew at that point, cause I'd gone through this enough. And I was just like, Oh, but then it's crazy. Cause even though I was so excited and I want to go out to California, my brain starts going, Oh, but then you have to pack the car. You have to put all these things together. You have to clean up the room. You have to take everything down, try and fit it off. You have to drive back, back cross country. It's trying to like take me out. It's trying to convince and me talk, to talk, not talk, talk, talk I, yourself out of it. It's because we do that. We do. You know, we talk ourselves we out do. of the things that we want most. And so I don't, I don't, I, it's just, Man, it's it's a it's definitely a wild thing. But again, once you start to be the observer, obs, observer, obs, <laughs> observer of those thoughts, you're like, that's not real. I've been to I've been here before. Okay, you know, people in my head, whatever. Yeah, move aside. It, yeah, move aside because this isn't not real. This is the choice we're gonna make. I understand. I'm gonna have to put together the room, and I'm gonna have to fill the car. I'm gonna have to drive cross country. I'm gonna have to do these things, whatever. Right. So that became that point, and I was ready to move back out to California, and I couldn't find any place like a place to rent couldn't find anything and i was like oh i've never experienced this in california and i also was having a tricky time of like where i wanted to go i was like oh i've lived in uh i've lived all over in california but i was like maybe back to west hollywood but i was like i've done that so many times i really think san diego i was like i just really i don't know why i feel that just south there's something different 
And I was really feeling that. And I couldn't find anything anywhere. And if you could have met, you would have never been able to meet someone more against Florida. My mom's always, I want to retire in Florida. Yeah, and whatever, nothing wrong with Florida. Just for me and my experiences that I've had in the past, Florida was not the best. It was the furthest thing from it. I understand the beaches there. And there's, there are, I mean, I'm here, you know, so there are a ton of amazing things out here. But from my experience, I was, my mom kept telling me, you know, so that's why I bring up Florida. I was looking at California, couldn't find something. And I was like, well, you know, like they do have great taxes (laughs) and (laughs) it's sunny. I was like, let me just see. I was like, I've never said no to Miami. I've never said no to Miami. It's way closer. And if I don't like it, I'm a place in my life where I drive up there. It takes a day and a half, two days. I don't like it. I'll just drive freaking cross country. Just pack up again, man. You've done it. You've done it a few times. I've done it, right? So as much as I probably don't want to do it, it's irrelevant. I know on the other side of that is a life beyond my wildest dreams. Yes. I feel that feeling because that's what's most important is that feeling. Because then when you feel that, you talk about frequency. That's when everything falls into place. Yeah, you know what's on the other side. Yeah, but I'm so I came out here and I came down to this area and I was like, like I love it reminds is very reminiscent of a lot of California. Uh, definitely humid. It was so hot when we came here. I feel like it was June or July. And uh, I was like, okay, like for the, for the time being, I can move the business down here. It makes sense. I was able to find a place and I'm just at such a different place in my life in general. So I'm so grateful to be able to have the opportunity to do these things. And it just worked out. And I was like, <laughs> I was go. like, Oh my, Oh my gosh. And, and my life, since I've been here, mind you, it was the bit, you would never have met someone more against Florida. But because I made that jump, I felt it. Yeah. My Everything in my being, those voices want to be like, just go out to uh, California, just pay pay this. Because anything I could find was like, it doesn't even make sense. You pay what, like multiple mortgages <laughs> on the thing you pay for rent that you don't even have equity. Like it doesn't even make sense, right? Yeah. But those things in my head want to be like, but do it. You know, you know, California is the best thing for you. So it's that balance. Between, yes, I do know that, but is there something else that I'm unaware of that I don't know and I could be open to that possibly could be better than what I'm trying to envision, right? Because it's always bigger and better than you could possibly imagine. So I will tell you, in my experience since being here in the last six months or whatever, the biggest shift and change in my entire life in every single aspect and in the shortest amount of time, we're talking six months in the comparison to, I swear, my whole entire life. Yeah, that's huge, man. That's huge. I have to be, I have to like sit back. I sit, I mean, this is something that I think about all the time. I was yeah. like, oh, like, what the hell? No? How did this happen? Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those other, just like you said, another one of those like affirming. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my gosh, the, the laws of the universe, this is really real. You know, it's so real. It's like, I got to freaking talk about it. Yeah. That's how the frequency music started, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. You know, like even just, I mean, even just us today being here you know, you know, this is our, you know, kind of like our, our, really our first time really like really interacting this much. Right. Like, and yeah. you know, like I really believe in lo- all the things that you're saying as well. And like the whole thing, like the universe, like it, you know, and I know you're going to agree with this. Uh, <laughs> like it brought us together here today, man. Like it's, it's, it's the frequency, it's the energy, it's everything that you're doing, everything I'm doing. And I really, really, really truly believe like, like same thing me with this podcast thing, man. Like on the stacks will be back in a flash after a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Elevation Wellness, NEPA's premier wellness center located on Monday Street in Wilkesbury. From pro athletes to busy parents, Elevation Wellness is leading the conversation when it comes to bettering your health through integrative medicine. Founded by NEPA native Louis Helmecki, Elevation Wellness offers physician formulated and guided treatments that are administered by registered nurses. To learn more about how you can experience the benefits of IV vitamin therapy, multivitamin booster shots, non invasive aesthetics, or peptide, NAD, red light, and compression therapy, visit elevation wellness.com or follow them on Instagram at Elevation Wellness NEPA. All On The Stacks listeners will receive 10% off their first purchase with code STACKS at checkout. Call 570-762-9400 or visit elevation-wellness.com to book your appointment today. Elevation Wellness, taking your health to new heights. A lot of times when people are in car accidents, kind of forget what we should do. First and foremost, call 911. Then get out of your car before moving it and take pictures. 
it's so important to capture what the cars look like immediately following the accident. Finally, call your insurance carrier and make a claim. To learn more, visit Anza Loan Law Offices online at anzalonelaw.com. This episode is brought to you by Loop Internet. Are you tired of buffering, lagging, and slow internet speeds? Look no further. Introducing Loop Internet, Northeastern Pennsylvania's fastest and most reliable internet service provider. With Loop Internet, you can stream, game, and work from home seamlessly. Say goodbye to interruptions and hello to lightning fast connections. Loop Internet offers both residential and business fiber. Fast track the future with their 10 gigabyte fiber and join the Loop Internet family today. Visit Loop Internet online at loopinternet.com or call 1 888 808 5667. Again, that's 1 888 808 5667. Or visit them online at loopinternet.com. Loop Internet, where speed meets reliability. And now we're back on the stacks. Like it's 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 brought me to people to experiences that like I just never would have thought would have happened. People I never would have even still didn't even know existed. First of all, like and just yeah. just yeah. that alone, right? So just that alone is fascinating, right? But um, but yeah, man, like the universe just has connected the dots in so many ways. Like 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 I said, like like us sitting here right now, like. It's it's just it's it's unbelievable, man. Like I really truly believe all that because I mean this is this is a this is a right now. I know I'm repeating myself like the third time here, but like this is a perfect example right now, right this yeah. moment. It is, it is, and it's so true. And the thing is, is being able to get to that place in your life where you can be open to allowing the unknown. Which someone actually voiced to me in another podcast. They were saying, "I would like for you to think about." phrase like thinking about it differently because i do say the fear of the unknown because which is also true if we fear all the things that are unknown oh no i I don't know what could happen if i make this jump or i leave my husband or i do whatever the case is i i don't know like what's life look like or i quit my job you know to pursue this thing that i love it's all unknown but really this is how he phrased it to me isn't it you're scared of all the known the known possibilities of all the negative things that could happen which is true. So really we're scared of all the negative known things that could possibly happen. And it's just on the fear of that other side that holds us back from doing the, making the leap or making the decision, the choice uh, from those things. But, but just like you said, not sitting here in this moment, you have to let go. I, I don't know. I'm not even going to try and figure out the known. I'm just going to allow it to present itself and to be, but how do I set myself in alignment and that frequency and that energy of being receptive to that. Because still, if you're like, oh, okay, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. But then your daily life is like, oh, I got to deal with this or I got to have this person, whatever the case is, you're in the wrong frequency. So you're going to attract more of that stuff. Yeah. So it's finding things and implementing these things into your life that are going to put you in the frequency. What type of music do you listen to? You don't think it's that important. I, nothing wrong against the Kardashians or anything else. They built an empire and I freaking respect all of that. But listening to that they know what they're doing they're smart and it's why dramas and soap operas and all these things are great and they'll always be around the news yeah um yep it's something that attaches to our brains but once you start focus focusing on that all the time those are the things and putting yourself in those frequencies that you're attracting to i don't care if you're open to receiving anything it's actually scarier because if you are open to receiving anything and then you're watching and listening to all those negative things and having conversations whoever your friends and whatever are that's what happens? Yeah, you, be- you, you know? become and that, you become what you yeah. consume. I say it all the time, man. Like what you you, you, cons- you said, you become what you uh, what, abs- yeah, what you what you, what you uh, consume. Like whatever content, whatever what it is, you, consume, yeah. you yep. become what you consume for sure. Exactly. Yeah. And if you can, yeah, if you consume garbage, then you're gonna you're gonna have a garbage mind. It's it's I mean it's that simple. <laughs> like really, it's true. But, but our brain, but the human brain likes that stuff. I know it's weird, isn't it? It's so weird. It's just so, it's instinctual, man. It's that past DNA. We got a fire flight. We need to know what's going to happen in the drama. There's a fight. You yeah. know? Oh, did you hear what Susie did? Yeah. You know? And, and like, You're drawn it's, right to it's it. Wild. Yeah. It's, it's, it is fascinating, but, it, but I think that's, I guess, because it's all opinion based, but I've heard plenty of other people that related to that as well. You know, the past DNA, prehistoric, just old ways of thinking. Crazy. It's crazy. It's, I mean, spe- yeah. speaking of like frequencies, I mean, I find it so fascinating, like with your music, like how you, you like, the, the, the beats and the melodies and everything, it's all built around these frequencies. And like, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I'm just, I'm, I've never really seen an, like an artist like that, I guess before, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm really fascinated by it, you know, and like how you, 
you know, how you, you how you create music around that. So I kind of want to like dive a little bit into into, you know, Abel as the as the artist and um, and, you know, talk a little bit about your your journey as a as a musician, man, because it's um, it's you, you have a fascinating story. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, music. So yeah, I said I snowboarded. I didn't really, music was never a thing. Music more so serendipitously found me. It was a fortunate accident. Uh, the one thing, the one choice that I did make back then on the monopoly board in my life is I, I never went out. I associated with the same people around my, my town never went out, out after snowboarding. And then someone had asked me like, just like, Hey, if you're ever in New York, hit me up. And I was feeling really bad and I wanted to go back and make a lot of wrong choices at that time. But I was feeling, I was like, oh my gosh, I have like this piece in my toolkit. Like this person said to hit him up and to do that. So I was like, I'm just going to do something different. I don't want to go. I know that last resort, I could always go back to the same people, places and things that I was associating with that were, it was all no, no, no good. Right. And so I made that choice. The decision went to New York and that's where I went to a, the, the club it was called Pasha at the time changed my life. I was like, Oh, I, what is this? Mind you, my dad was a musician, but for some reason, that particular time at that point in my journey, it didn't my, click my with you eye, until then. I was like, I don't know what it is. I felt even more than snowboarding because it's funny. Now I look back and I was like, Oh my gosh, uh, like uh, that's all I wanted to happen. Now I look at, back and say, That was the best thing that never happened for me. Right, right. It was a blessing. Right? It, was, it was a blessing. You didn't realize it until then, right? For sure. And we don't. And I think that's what's so hard and holds us back a lot of the time um, from things that happen now in the present mo moment or might happen is we can't see that. But once, just like you said, we could be open and receptive to a lot of those things. It's like maybe this bad thing or whatever's happening because there's something on the other side of it. There's always something on the other side of always. everything, you know, always. And the, the one thing that we know as human beings is everything is temporary. The good the bad, everything. It's all, it's all, we're only here, you know, as human beings. So if you already know all these concepts, it's like, okay, how do I, I want to enjoy as much of it as possible, you know, not in a corny way, but like I do. And, and yeah, it's taking all of those things into consideration. But in, in, in back to my, my point of music, I found that I was like, I just want to do this. I don't know what it is. I experienced the club. I was like, I don't know what it is. You're just like, I want to do it somehow. I want to be, I want to do something, but I just don't know what it is. I never experienced that frequency, not even with snowboarding, just the people in there. Mm. Mind you, this was before, and this was house music. So this was before it was ever on the radio. You would ever hear a synth on the radio yeah. and, and, and you know, bump into people. Mind you, I get people who are probably in all different states of mind, but I never experienced it. I felt like at home because I'm like this, you know, and I know internally I'm like this and you know, this, <laughs> I'm sober. Right. Yeah. So. I bumped into people and I bump in and where I grew up, if you bumped into somebody like, what the fuck? Like, it's, yeah, it's a fight. Be a fight. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an issue. Yeah. But then you bump into somebody like, Oh, uh, eh, huh. you know, yep. I remember that. Yep. Uh, I've never experienced that before. I'm like, Oh, holy moly. So it was a combination Complete of that opposite. and the high frequency of the fast yeah. music and all of these things. I was like, who can I talk to? You know, how do I be involved in any of this? And it was that frequency and this frequency that I now still project and still feel even talking about referencing the story of how it all started. Um, that's what changed. And so I started going back, not for the wrong reasons, but I started going back. Who can I connect to? Who can I talk to? And so I started talking to people and they're like, well, if you really want to take this music thing serious, you can DJ, but you're going to hit a ceiling. You need to learn how to produce. Right. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. You know, whatever I have to do, I can do that. I want to do that. And I just wanted to keep reliving that feeling because because at the end of the day i was like i can make other people feel the way that i feel oh <laughs> look at this look at this <laughs> I can make, yeah you no know, i'm telling you we live Fireworks. in a freaking simulator uh, it's a video game man and i can make other people and that's what you realize all of it's about right yeah i can make other people feel the way that i feel right now currently and can continuously by I doing that new song yeah and oh my gosh i could keep throwing that out there into the world and so I became obsessed and it was unlike snowboarding. This goes to where I was saying talent. It's a weird thing for me. Uh, people could look at a lot of the things that I say now and say, well, it's just oh, so talented. The reason I like to talk about this is because I don't want someone else to see what I'm doing and to be put off or thrown off and be like, oh, I wish that could be me. But he's just talented. He just has talent. Yes, it would be an easier conversation and be like, thank you for saying that I'm talented. But I do genuinely care. Like I want... If someone sees something, especially that I'm doing, or they want to go after something similar, I want to be like, bro, like it was 
the furthest thing from it just came naturally to me. The furthest thing. Like none of it. And I tried every DAW digital audio workstation. I tried every program. You can imagine nothing clicked. Nothing made sense. And this is before I put my vocals. Again, I was still too insecure to do anything vocally. Uh, but I was like, I, I could hide behind production. And I just loved house music. So it was per it was a perfect like excuse to get me to start to do it. Yeah. And but I tried everything, man. I couldn't, nothing clicked. And I just wasn't a computer guy. You know, it's like anything ath athletically, cool, you know, I'm down to do. And I could do it. But then it was like computers and freaking, I didn't get it. And it frustrated, it drove me insane that I didn't understand it so much that I needed to figure it out, you know, because I wanted it that bad. And it, and it just frustrated me. So little by little, then I found, long story short, I found Logic, uh, Logic Pro. And I, it didn't click, you know, by any means, but it made you, you the most sense there. for yeah, my brain. Yeah, it started all, making sense. You know, all, yeah, all the, all, there's so many different layouts, right? And it started making sense. It started clicking. And then it was just like, uh, again, talent in my definition, at least by what I do now, it was just hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of beating at my craft. That's it. You know, like that's really all it, all it is. If something looks polished or you see something out there, it, there was a lot of time, sweat and energy that went into that final product, you know? Uh, and I think that's what twists us up as human beings, whether it's watching someone's career or seeing that other seeing something that someone else has and be like, oh, I wish I had that. Um, for one, horrible mentality to live in. Don't focus on those things, right? Uh, the, the the differences. But we're seeing the final product. Yeah. You yeah, know, we're yeah, seeing, no, nobody we're saw seeing the reps. What, nobody saw all the reps, man. I say it all the time, dude. I say it all the time. It's like, you know, like people look at, you know, my podcast, my show and stuff. And like, I have a lot of people, yeah, I've been doing this for, you know, almost five years. And people are like, oh man, like, like oh, that's so cool. It looks so fun. And like, it is fun, right? And it's like, but everybody looks around, like they see the studio that I built, they see all the stuff I have. And, 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 and like a lot of people now along my journey or, you know, that are like, sort of like, you know, seeing my journey, it's like, they didn't see yeah. the first four years. They only saw, they only see like me and you right now, like literally right yeah. now they're seeing you and I talking on this show and they're like, oh man, like, oh, sh like you said, like somebody said to me, one of my friends said to me one time, she's like, uh, she's like, you, you just make it look easy. That's why. Uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and that was like one of the, one of the best things I ever heard. Cause it, then it finally made sense to me because, you know, like everyone looks at it and is like, Oh, like, Oh, Bill, like, look at all this stuff you have, look at all you're doing. It's like, well, yeah, but like, you didn't know me four years ago. Like you didn't know, yeah. like you didn't see all the reps that I put in behind the scenes, nights, weekends, blood, sweat and tears for the last four years to be able to get where I'm at now. And it's like, yeah, you could do it too. Anyone can do it too. But it comes with a lot of hard work, sacrifice and time. And like, you got to put in the work. And like you said, it's, you know, when you see something that's, that's produced, it's like the reason that it looks so good is because of all the reps you put in. It's like, and, you, and like my friend said, you make it look easy. But the reason you make it look yeah. easy is because you put in the work to make it look easy. And now you're, you're, you're really good at it. And, 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 and yeah. other people, and other people can get there. Other people, they can get there. It's just, they got to put in the reps. I man. do believe that, man. I mean, it's, it's, at least it was for me. And you hear the, the saying it's 10 years of over overnight success. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, People just look at you as an overnight but success. Hear, yeah. But, but as human beings, we always want the easiest answer. And the easy, we hear the one story where it was legitimately overnight success, but like 99% of those stories, which they are so rare, yeah. uh, ever turn out good. Yeah. You know? Right. Exactly. Uh, you also, you don't, you don't have the appreciation, you know? So yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's the journey, man. That's it is. the juice. It is. And, yeah. and like for you too. So like, so like you're, you know, for, for a long time, like you did a lot of, a lot of ghost writing, right? Like, yeah. So after I got into production, then it was, it was so weird. Cause I never thought, uh, it was never, I was just like, I love doing all of this. Like, you know, whatever, I don't need to be paid, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, my mind was just very, you know, from the, like from the, how do I, how do I just do this as a living? So ghost, ghost, writing and ghost producing became that sort of intermediate in between. So I could still do what I wanted to do, but I didn't know, I didn't understand business structure and like how things worked on the back end and royalty percentages and where things are distributed. I, I knew nothing about that. So I was just like, okay, this is enough that I could keep doing what I'm focused on, you know, uh, even though it wasn't what I was deserve what I really should have been paid for the percentage of stuff that, I, but it's irrelevant, right? Because you learn these things. We don't look back and be like, 
oh, like I wish this didn't have like built resentment on things we can't even change. That just holds us back from a future that we have always wanted. So I'm not going to sit because I have. That's the thing. Like I've done that. Yeah. Right. So ghostwriting happened. I was like, I'm grateful. Look back. OK, the, those are mistakes. I should have figured that out. I should have had a lawyer. I should have had whatever. Uh, but then we're not going to do that now. Yeah. Right. It's having yeah. that understanding. And that's what allows us to evolve and move forward. But the more because that's what I did at first. I sat and I was like, why would this person do this? I would never do this to somebody. I would never do that to somebody. Why are they doing that? Oh my gosh, is this how I have to be in this industry? Oh no, that's, I don't want to change into that person. I don't feel like I'm that person. And that's why I feel like once things started to, to evolve and happen in my career, the number one thing that I would always hear is like, don't let the, don't be tainted or don't let the industry ruin you. Like don't change, mm, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, you can't not change. You have, you, like you're forever evolving. So you right. still, so really it's just the balance of both of those things. How do you still be a decent human being within this crazy industry not want to take advantage of other people out of fear that if you don't, they're going to take advantage of you. Um, it's just, it's just a balance of, of all of it. I don't I think the balance is ever on one side to take advantage of someone. I definitely don't believe that, but, uh, but yeah, like protecting yourself and just knowing information, finding information. We live in the best time in the age. We have Google and YouTube. Yeah. It's right, <laughs> right at our fingertips. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, you know, obviously I'm sure, I'm sure you probably get asked this a lot, but like, I want to, I want to, you know, hear a little bit about your, your experience. You know, obviously I've seen, I've seen the show Songland, but I'm, I'm, I, I want to kind of, you know, go back to that, that time, that moment in your life, uh, you know, on, on that show and that, you know, that, that moment, um, because that's, you know, obviously and again, like a lot of people too, like same thing, like, you know, we'll look at that and be like, Oh, it's, you know, all of a sudden now it's like an overnight success. And it's like, well, oh, yeah. yeah, but did you see what Abel was doing for years and years and years before that moment? You know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's funny because when that happened, then people that actually knew me, uh, I feel like most would say I'm crazy. Like I just never slept. I didn't eat. Like all I did was work. Um, yeah, it's funny. People would say after then that that happened and it became public information. You know, it went out into the world. They're like people just literally slept on Abel. Like slept on while as they said while everyone was sleeping, Abel was working, you know, they literally slept. Now, now I understand like what that's saying. Maybe that is what it means, yeah, but I never yeah. knew that. I was like, oh my gosh. People were literally sleeping while this person was working. And I was like, yeah, that was the truth. So that experience at the show was, I already said before, and this is funny, we talk about manifestation or whatever, putting it out there. Uh, I said before, I, I don't know who's going to win. I didn't even know what the show was about. I didn't know who I was going to be with. I didn't even want to do it. Uh, I was just, I was, I was supposed to leave California that week that that happened. I was supposed to leave California mm. the week I was there for three, almost, almost four years. I was supposed to leave. This was just another roll and of the dice. There wasn't, there wasn't enough. I mean, California is expensive. There wasn't enough making ghost writing things to keep me out there. My parents were definitely not able to fund me supporting living out there. And I didn't want to go home. And I was so scared of like, Oh my gosh, is it, am I going to go back into the past life? I was so scared. So I was like, all I, all I know is that I need to do something that I feel. Yes. I've worked on a lot of music and, I've had some cool, amazing experiences out here, but as far as career goes and like moving forward, none of that has happened. So I need to feel if I, if I have to go home, if that's what the, the universe, cause I was big, big on the universe, uh, back then. And I was like, if, if that's what the universe wants and to go back home, I need to feel like at least I left California doing something that like I put out into the world, you know, like a piece of art or whatever. So yeah. I was, that's when I came up, I need to make a music video. Right. And the music video and the music that I was making at the time and that is still on the back catalog today is completely opposite of how it is now. It's very dark. It's very negative. It's very where it's a lot different. A lot different. Yeah, I'm totally polar. One eighty. And yeah, but in a yeah, good way now. Yeah. In a good way, right? Yeah, I mean, I, and I said to myself for a long time that was the way of me expressing the way that I feel inside without actually carrying through those acts in real life. I was mm. like, oh, it's almost a sense of journaling, right? Right. And self so, so I, yeah, yeah, right. So I, so what I did right before that, that like that week leading up, I, I said, I need to film a music video. So I reached out to another buddy. I didn't really know many people in film or that could do that. So I reached out to one buddy, shout out Johnny that I met uh, when I first got out there and he knew another buddy in film. And he's like, well, I'll see if they, cause I didn't have any money, you know, at the time I just shoot, did figure any of this out. Yeah. And, 
I was like, well, like, is he cool to just like do it? But I, I, I want him to get paid. Like, what can we? And he's like, let me see if I can even find anyone that's going to want to do it. And then in this time frame, because I'm very much when I work, let's get it done. Like, okay, I want to do this. Damn, right now. Shoot let's go. Yeah. I want to do it. Right. You got you guys down to go. And they're like, yeah. bro, like, I, I still, like, no, like, move you know, fast. I didn't have lunch. I get it. Well, that's not what I'm asking. Are you down? Yeah. 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 And, and so he, he sent it to the first person. Shout out. His name's Alex Rinks. Sent it to him. He listened to it. And, he before Johnny even prefaced anything else, he's like, "Hey, this kid's looking to shoot a music video. See if you're down with the music." He sent it to him. The first thing he hit hits my buddy right back up. He's like, "Bro, like I'll film that for free." He literally that was the first thing he said. Like, if this is his first music video, bro, this music insane. Like, I so, so resonate with all of it and can relate to it. I want to shoot it for free. So I met him. He saw me and then like, I, I I lived and worked out of a shed at the time. So I invited him over. I was like, "Yeah, we should do all these ideas." We do, you know, <laughs> like just all cracked out. But I wasn't, you know. <laughs> And, and, uh, yeah, so he really vibed with it. And I told him, I was like, I'm about to move out this next week, but I want to, these are the ideas. And he's like, all right, well, if you could send me a treatment, I was like, I don't know what the treatment is, but I didn't say that to him. I was like, okay, I'll do all of it and send it to you. I'll do it. Like, what, are you going to be back in like 10 minutes? I'll do it. You know? And then his head's like, you got to write a treatment. Now I know what a treatment is, you know? And so I Googled, you know, YouTube, just like I did anything else. Okay. How do you write a treatment? Got everything, got all the pictures off the whole, the palette of what I wanted, all the things to look like. And I sent it right to him. He's like, did you? Did you literally just do this and send this back to me? It's like, yeah, okay, you ready? <laughs> you know, and this is moving, yeah. you know, moving like that. And I was like, oh, we got to do this. And and I was like, okay, so you down to shoot it. I was thinking it was like tomorrow. I was like, are you down to shoot it tomorrow and find this? And then I, I needed, uh, there was another actress that we needed. So all these things and got it all done and went to go spot the film, shot everything, got everything. It was freaking awesome, flawless. And then I get the footage, you know, on a hard drive and I tend to neglect to forget. I need to edit it, you know? And I was like, oh, I definitely can't pay an editor to do this. And and I knew enough at that point, even just thinking about film. Film has always fascinated me. And I've watched enough BTS and to see how people structure things that I was like, there's no way it's going to get, like, it's going to take a long time. And I want to do this now before I leave. I want to put it out there. So I stayed up three nights straight, learned how to edit on Final Cut Pro X, edited the whole music video, put it out right as I'm about to leave. It got 74 views. I didn't expect it to go viral or do anything. You know, it, was, it wasn't even TikTok at this point. Put it out there. And I was like, ah, oh, like to the universe. Like I, like I did. I did okay, this. Okay, now we can yeah. figure out the, the, the U-Haul and everything. Literally that week, someone at NBC and Universal saw that video. Out of the 74, one person out of the 74 views that, and, I, and the reason I told that story and prefaced the song lane question that you asked me with that story is because just like you said, and we were talking about, I said the 10 years of overnight success, the four years, five years that you put in along, I'm sure with many more years of all the things that even worked up for you even to be able to make that jump. Uh, that's what had happened. And one person, it only takes one, all it needs to be is one, right? Out of that is what allowed the show to happen. And I almost didn't do it because I was like, is this uh, like be on the phone conversation with them? It's like, this is so fake. <laughs> you know, I was like, You're going to do what? Like, and you saw, you found me from what? Uh, and because the video that I filmed, it was, it was very, I guess you could say explicit. Like it didn't have the best thing. So it's like NBC and Universal. I'm like, you know, twisted. Like this isn't. This isn't real. Yeah. Even, yeah. This isn't real. And until I had a conversation with my mom and I told her, right. As I'm about to leave California. She's like, you better do it or you're not coming home. You know? And I was like, oh, <laughs> so shout out my Dukes. And so I did it. And, and so, I, so I called him. I was like, okay, like, we'll do it. I filled out all the stuff. And they moved me in that, the end, like that Friday that I, the leaving, supposed to leave. Like you talk about a transition, you can't even make that up. And so the experience there, I was saying, even when I got there, the people that I was meeting before I even went, like, I realized, oh my gosh, it's like a, a show and you have to like win. I have to sing in front of people. I was like, I don't like, do oh, that. Shit, I got to perform. I don't freaking do that. Yeah. yeah. I was like, all oh, these things. I don't do that. It was every single fear that I possibly could have had leading up to building this career uh, and the things that I wanted most in this world, every single fear, all in one, all, like, all encompassing yeah. as well as like you get around those people. It's a 50, 50 shot. At least the way that I saw it, you're either meant for this or you're not. You were either really crazy. What people wanted to tell you, you're crazy. You really were that, or you were meant for this. And my experience throughout the whole show, shout out to everyone, shout out to Audrey Morrissey, David Stewart, everyone that's, was a part of that show and obviously uh esther shane and ryan i've never been 
treated like I was at home more than ever. And, and that's where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm this, I was right. Like I wasn't crazy. I was, this, this is, I'm home. I already won. I already won. I don't care what happens. You felt I already won. Yeah. Yeah, I felt that. I already won. I kept saying that. All the interviews, I don't even know how they chopped up. I kept, I swear I said that in every interview. I was like, it's cool. cool. I already won. You know, like I already won this experience, the people that I met, that I already won. And I won. You know? Yeah, and then you so actually yeah, won. Then you won. Yeah. And then I literally won. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, it was just so, and then that's a whole after that, then, then really understanding the, the music business and the whole, per, all the things that go into realizing it's not just about music. All the things, if you really want to have a career and sustain and a big one's been like, man, I want to buy my mom a house on the beach, you know, and, and a horse. She loves horses. So all these things that I really want in life, obviously you have to structure things a certain way. It's not like, I'm just going to be an artist. I'm going to make music and anyone can have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah it happens overnight. Uh, yeah. For, for sure. So there was a whole uh, another like, you know, while after that of just understanding that reading the book, shout out Donald Passman. Um you know, just all like music business and it's confusing. And they do that intentionally, you know, they don't want, it's like, yeah. uh, it's the same thing as anything else in life though, right? It's like, you want it, all the, the answers are there. People that understand and play the game, people get upset that are like, well, they do things like this and they don't pay taxes. Like they understand how it works. Like yeah. it's structured to do that. It's just not plain. It's not in your face. You have yeah. to figure have to it learn out, it. right? Yep. Yeah, it's the game. Yep. So you got to read the rules, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's wild, man. Yeah. It's wild. Like, and again, going back yeah. to like how you said, like when you were saying like, I already won, I already won. It's like, you were speaking it. You're just speaking it into the universe. And that I didn't even know. I, like I was on that wave. Definitely not to the extent I am now, but I was on that wave then. You just didn't really, but I wasn't even, didn't really realize it. it. Yeah. You were just like, oh, like this is, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm here. Felt. Yeah. That's how I felt. And that's where the juice is. That's where you talk about ma magic of man, whatever, just life frequency. That's where all the juice is. What does it feel like? You want that thing, you want that car, that whatever, whatever you want, or the relationship doesn't have to be a material possession. You, what does it feel like? You know, what does that life feel like? And then live in that present moment, right? You think about it in future tense. This is what it feels like. Oh my gosh, you get excited in the present moment actually, outside of thinking about that. How do you draw that and bring that so you can live in that frequency? Plus, you're just a happier person, you know? Yeah. Well, and then the, the excuse we create as human beings is, well, Nothing wrong with Honda Civics, but well, I drive a Honda Civic. How am I supposed to pretend like I drive a whatever? Oh my gosh. Like great excuse. You know, it's true. Like you do have a Honda Civic, but what does it feel like? I used to drive around, especially when I used to be on my bike. I used to ride a bike. I didn't have a car. You know, what, what does it feel like? I'm riding my bike and I'm like, I'm just riding my bike to my whatever car, you know, my Lamborghini, my McLaren, my whatever else. I'm that's what I'm doing. I'm just riding to it. I would just fake the whole fake it till you make it concept, which I never cosign because i came from very david meant i'm not gonna fake anything you know david very david goggins i'm not gonna i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna feel it but when it comes to this and you talk about the laws of the universe you're living in that frequency fake it to make it what's it feel like oh my gosh you know oh and what's it feel why you roll down the window i don't care if it's your honda civic you roll down the window you know <laughs> you know yeah I, yeah a lot of a lot of things had to happen for this to happen but i'm grateful yeah, nice you know yeah whatever your thing is yeah you know, i don't know you roll yeah. it the windows whatever it is up do that yep. carry I, yeah, I have no idea. But what does it feel like? And then once you start to do that, you live in the frequency and then you're in alignment of bumping into that person, meeting that thing, having that conversation, watching that video, whatever it is, you're now in alignment. It's going. It's, of, it's get, you're, on the, you're on the path now. Yeah. If not, then you were angry. You're yelling at the person. You chose to honk at that road rage, whatever. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a choice and decisions, you yeah. know, but unfortunately – most people don't have this awareness or this understanding to even make those choices and decisions. So therefore, if we have a platform like this, Boom. I think it's a disservice not to talk about them and share them. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. So yes, yeah. we have to, I, I honestly, like I've said this, I, I, I've been saying this a lot lately. Like I really feel like it's like, I'm, I feel, res I feel responsible to do it. Like I would feel irresponsible if, if like yeah. you and I weren't having this conversation right now and we weren't talking about these things and weren't trying to, tell people what's possible and how to do this and how to do that because like you know it's you know like we were all there at some point right and and now that like yeah. we're at, say you know you're at a point where you're at i'm at a point where i'm at it's like man like i actually like i, I feel a responsibility to to be able to help other people get to where wherever it is that they want to go and 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 but it all, but again i think it also starts with like like 
just making them believe first of all that they could yeah. do yeah. it and again it goes back to the talent thing like and that 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 word also fascinates me too because it's like i always say like you know you know you can just hustle beats talent by a long shot right like you could sure. you hustle and put in the work and put in the work and it's like years and years and years of work you just you, you just outwork the next guy and like if yep. if you can just adapt that that mindset and that mentality and believe in it and just believe in the journey and like you said just you know just this door opens that one then you meet this person then you go here then you do that and it's like if you if you just if you if you w- wouldn't have walked out that door like the minute that you did and like this happened or that happened, like you'd be in a whole different place right now in your life, man. And dude, I can go on and on and on and on about like stories like that, where it's like, I, I gave it like one more minute, like literally one more minute. And then uh, uh, the bit, one of the biggest breakthroughs happened. Do you know what I mean? Like, wow. and like that happens all the time. Like it happens all the time. Like, don't leave five minutes before the miracle. That's a, like one of the sayings. Yeah, it's so true. It is, man. You know, so you, Cause we don't know, you know, yeah. you, don't, you don't know what you don't know. And you, you know, when you know, yeah, <laughs> so, right. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I also sometimes too, like, I feel like now more than ever, like I also have like these like gut feelings more than I ever have. It's like, no, like I, I, I feel something here. So I'm going to, I'm just going to wait a little bit longer. I'm going to try yeah. a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to do a little bit more, do a little bit more, do a little bit more. Cause like, I just know, I just like, I know it's, yeah. I know it's right there. Like it's there. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like, and then, I feel that. and then sure as shit, guess what? Here it is. <laughs> then, then it's like, I knew it all this time. I knew it was meant to be. Yep. I knew this was going to happen. Like 10. And that's the most yeah. amazing internal validation. I feel like any human being could experience because you trusted yourself enough, had that gut instinct as, as they also say, the gut is the second brain. Um, and then it happened, you know, and sometimes it's never, I mean, really a lot of the time it's never exactly, you don't know when it's going to happen and exactly how it's going to happen. Those are the two things you just got to be let go of, Yeah, you know? Um, but when it does, it's always bigger and better than we got possibly the, the balloons and all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, but it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, man, it's, it, I, I, this, this stuff just like really, you know, fascinates me. I love having these, to- these, these conversations with people like you because, it's um like I said I I really do like I really feel I really feel like a responsibility now like you know and and Definitely. and there's so many people that I think just get really down on themselves and just give up way 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 too soon man like it's yeah. it's it makes me sad to see sometimes people can't even recognize their own potential they can't get out of their own way and it's like you know it's not going to be easy but it's 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 possible like literally anything is possible like you're only like one you're like one step away like you know one minute one step one person one song one podcast one interview one one anything anything just yeah one. shout out shout out to ed Milet. go yeah, read right Power yeah there you go more. that's that's yeah obviously that that's what that's from and i'm glad you recognize that one man. of my favorite books that's one of my favorite books 100 percent, bro like that that's why i've been saying it you it. know i was like it that's is it. so true no, I'm like, that's dang, it. this, he freaking wrote a book on that. I was like, I should have did that. Yeah. You know? It's like the simplest like concept. So many of us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so true though. It is. So true. The power of one more, baby. It is man. And it's, yeah, I encourage people to read that book. I encourage people to, you know, consume more content, you know, you know, consume your content, you know, and, you know, along that lines, I mean, you have, you have a lot of things going on the coaching, the masterclass, the community you're building. Like, tell me a little bit about that, you know, before we wrap up, like how can people, you know, well, first of all, before we get there, I, I want to say this, like you and I only like, we barely scratched the surface today, man. And I feel like there needs to be oh, yeah. like a, a, a part two and then some after this, I'm down. let's do it. Because let's bro, like, it. this is like, this is like, we're, we're just like very surface level here, but like, there's so much, I know there's so much more to it. Um, and I'd love to like really get into like, get, get a lot deeper with maybe some specific things, uh, maybe in another episode in the near future, if you, if you're down for that, I'm for it. um, Oh, hundred percent. cool, man. But, uh, but yeah, so, uh, you know, where, where can people find you online? How can they, you know, how can they connect with you? How can they join the community? I'm part of it myself, obviously. Like I'm in there. I love it. I, like I said, I started, I started today off with the, uh, with the gratitude meditation. Um, but, uh, how, how can people find that content? Definitely for sure. Yeah. So as far as what you're, you're speaking about, uh, full of heart fam. so it's heartfam.com, and that community was, was really built in a super recent thing just because, at the end of the day, as content creators, uh, we're at the algorithms win. You know, that's just as much as I want. And I have a, like, I feel like, oh, I, I remember this thing that I now want to make a video about that has really helped me. 
that potentially could help someone else. I just want to get this message out there so it resonates and hits with whoever it's meant to. Outside of that, it's just being channeled through me. These are the things that I say, and that's that. But I want to get it out there. But the algorithm's like, no, bro. You know, like, no, you're not, you're not yeah. getting it anywhere. And you get to freaking no views, which is not about the numbers, but it is to me if it's about the reach that I hope it potentially right, can Right, right. It's like you want, you want to have the impact. So, you need to have the reach to have yeah. the impact. For sure. And, 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 and some, and a lot of, uh, not a lot of, I don't want to put it out there and project a lot of the times, but historically uh, it proved to be true that it just didn't, that my algorithm didn't like it. It probably wanted me freaking dancing or doing something weird. And I understand it, you know, it was built off of that, but I was like, okay, there's that. But then there's also sometimes even music. So there's the messaging, the things that have really changed my life. A lot of the topics that we talked on here today, a lot of those videos, uh, all my music, people don't even know. I still get asked questions about like, like song, it's, it's the Songland song is out. And like just songs that have been out because not because people are not smart. They just, they don't know yeah. because they didn't get that. The algorithm didn't feed them that information. Right. So, so there's that as well as a ton of BTS. So there's all these things that I was like, well, the algorithm can't do it. How do we build? Put it all in one place. Build, like, can we all put all this in one place and there's the freaking also do giveaways and uh and then a ton of the music that i don't even i don't think i'll ever release i work on so much stuff and then a ton of uh anything that i am going to release give it to everybody way before so it's just a ton anything that we can put in this community and fill it up with that along with what you voiced earlier the meditations because i had a ton of voice like meditations that i voice narrated and uh produced myself so i was like i could just we could just put everything all in one place and then people that are a part of this community and sign up they know that's where they can, they'll always get that information. There's not an algorithm within that website that's going to be like, maybe we'll give it yeah. to Sandy. Yeah. You no, know, maybe not. Yeah, right. Maybe yeah. 50 50 shot. Who knows? I don't have to. Yeah. And I don't have to play that game. And I think it's super cool as well within the community that people then can have those conversations and talks amongst themselves. And I've, some, some of the back and forth that I've seen just with people uplifting other people, because again, you send something out to the algorithm, say it did pop off, you're going to get a mixed bag. And that's totally cool. And I think uh, like all freedom to have conversations and open-ended, you know, thought processes, but sometimes people aren't in a place where they can like reciprocate that information. And again, it's not my job, nor if, even if it was, could I help and protect everyone that I believed were so sweet and nice. And I wanted this information to resonate with them, but it's just a place, man, like everything from music to BTS, to content, to all this information. when it comes from like Ed Milet, Dr. Joe Dispenza, uh, Mel Robbins, just anything along my journey that not only did I listen to that helped me digest and, and understand this information at this point, but also information I still listen to. Right. And just all these, and I've had this added up. So it's just a list of all of these things that it's just like, hey, if you're on this wave and you really do believe this, here's where you can get everything. Or you just are here for the music and you like that stuff, which is also amazing because that's that's what I do, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, you have all the stuff that is not going to go out into the world or stuff way before it's even going to go out into the world. So, uh, so yeah, it's heartfam.com. That's where everything uh, everything is there. But as far as my social and my platforms, it's everything is Able Heart, A-B-L-E-H-E-A-R-T, and Able Heart Music. So Very easy to find you. Yeah, yeah, pretty easy. You're on all the platforms. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, man, this was, this was, this was really dope. And, 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 you know, uh, you know, obviously thank you. And, uh, you know, I'll give a, you know, a little thank you and shout out to Chaz as well. Um, Chaz is the for man sure. for yeah. Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, this was, this was great, man. I, I really, I really enjoyed the conversation. And, uh, like I said, I, uh, hope we can, uh, hop on here again sometime in the near future and, uh, and, and too, and, you know, even though we're virtual, like it's, you know, you know, you're from, you know, like you say, you're from Philly. If you're ever, if you're ever up this way, or if I'm ever down, down your way, like we, I was just going to say that we could run a, 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 I got a podcast set up here. Let's we could go. run a, a round two down here. Absolutely, man. Yeah. 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 I'm we, uh, we yeah. have, we, uh, we all have to link up, uh, for sure, man. Cause it's, uh, like I said, the, the, uh, the whole universe thing, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's real. It's real. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's real. It's active and it's working constantly every day, every <laughs> minute, every yeah, minute for sure. All right, brother. Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's keep this conversation going. And, uh, and thanks again for joining me today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Seriously, Bill, for real. All right. Abel Hart on the Stacks in the Blue Door Studio. Thanks for joining me. Hi, brother. <laughs>
If you want to see more On The Stacks content, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash On The Stacks podcast or search the hashtag On The Stacks on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn.